Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel. Today, we're going to be looking at the Triumph Stag. Welcome back and welcome. It's Monday, isn't it? I hope Monday is going okay for you. You've had a great weekend. Um, I'm going through my Monday with... A nice cup of tea. I hope you're doing something similar. Relax, enjoy the programme. If you like nostalgia, if you like cars, if you like old car brochures, please consider subscribing. There should be something here for you at some point. Today's episode, like I say, the Triumph Stag, first introduced in 1970, I think it was June 1970 when it first arrived, ran till 1977. When it was first launched in the UK, it was really well received. In fact, it was so well received, I think there was like a 12-month waiting list for people wanting to get their hands on this car. And it wasn't a cheap car. It was sort of classed as being a, a luxury um, four-seater convertible. It was kind of like competing against cars like the Mercedes SL, which I always think is surprising. I always think the Mercedes SL is in a higher class. But there we go. It was kind of like pitched against them sort of cars, but people still wanted it. But it was mainly there to be sold to the US market. That was its main um, area that they wanted to sell these fine cars to. Unfortunately, very short space of time, it got this terrible reputation for unreliability. Lots of issues with that V8 engine, unfortunately. Mainly all surrounding quite poorly designed layout and it did cause problems with overheating, particularly on the US models, which added things like air conditioning, etc. So that's sad. So it really didn't get the sales in the US that it really wanted to go but in the UK it certainly has always been sort of like a car in the classic car scene amazingly of all the cars sold in the UK which weren't that many to be honest with you um, around about 45% I think the last time I looked at of those cars are still on UK roads so if you go to a classic car meet the chances are you're going to see one or two Triumph Stags there we're not going to dwell too much on the issues with the engine. We're going to enjoy this um, brochure, a late one actually from 1976. Here we have uh, this brochure from 1976 for the Triumph Stag, the British Leyland Plug Hall of Doom, some people call it, and a few little pictures of this lady looking at a few stags in the background. Interestingly, I think the, the name Stag is even always been thrown around even before uh, the car was launched. A lot of these British Leyland cars, they had kind of like code names, but Stag seems to be always associated with this car. Interestingly, this number plate, I tend to always put these number plates in sort of like the UK car checkers, and this does actually still come up as being a car around today. It comes up as a red Triumph Stag um, from November 1975 when it was first registered so that's interesting so this car may still be around and of course if this is your car please do comment that would be quite exciting to know um although we don't know if this is a car being driven around or if it's a museum car i really don't know but still showing up as red the original color so that's interesting and like i said at the start a lot of these uk cars are still around because it had such a classic car following uh, 45 46 percent of them still on the road in the uk which is a huge figure particularly with 70s cars and you know 70s cars were always prone to rusting of course but anyway as we turn the page for this particular brochure we get a first glimpse of a nice overhead shot of this particular Triumph Stag. It's the same number plate, same red Triumph Stag that see, still seems to be around today. If you notice, um, it was intended just to be a four-seater convertible, but they had to add this sort of like T-bar structure 
Um, like I say, sales, and most of the sales were supposed to be coming from uh, the US, of course, um, and that was kind of like, you know, a safety standard that they had to meet, a sort of like a, a collision standard that North America had to have this sort of T on there as well. Um, I don't think I had particularly like that T on there, but nevertheless, it had to be there for safety reasons. We see that sort of prancing stag, a lovely little badge, isn't it? And a side view as well with these lovely wheels. Overall, a very beautiful designed car, isn't it, overall? We'll have a look at some of this text on this brochure too. We're not going to read all the text on every page, but some of it's quite interesting, so it is worth looking through. It says... Uh, International appeal, these two words sum up the Triumph Stag, for this is a Grand Tourer car that has been beaten, that has beaten the Continentals at their own game. All over Europe, all over the world, motoring devotees have set their sights and their hearts on the Stag, which is great for Britain, if a trifle frustrating for the British Stag Hunters. What a strange start, really bragging about how fantastic this car is. It goes on to talk a little bit about uh, the performance level. So it says, um, let's have a look, it boasts a potent 3 litre V8 engine capable of launching you from 0 to 50 in a rocketing 7 seconds. Love it in the uh, in the 70s how they lowered that from a 0 to 60 to a more commonly used at this time 0 to 50. Sounds so much faster, doesn't it? Yet quiet and docile for a touring in the, a grand or in the grand manner. And inside there's no suggestion of a sports car. It says luxury abound. One of the world's most wanted cars. So really going right in there. I tell you what, you, you really want this car, don't you? We turn over the leaf. An unusual scene, isn't it, with these uh, helicopters? I always remember these sort of like bubble Helicopters being always on uh, 70s films, that unusual design. Together with this uh, star of the show, this Triumph Stag, still the same number plate, still that red November 75 Triumph Stag. And you can see how the Stag badge appears there. And a few little uh, cubby holes, etc. And this unusual shot uh, being looked from the helicopter. Again, we'll look at some of this text. Again, the, te the text is slanted, so I'm having to tilt the brochure to one side to get it all in there. And here it says, for the person who's going up in the world, travelling from A to B can be more than just a necessity, a means to an end. It should and can be a pleasure and enjoyable pastime. And the Triumph Stag has the qualities needed to ensure that this is achieved. It goes on and on and on, telling you about access to the rear seats, find the wide front doors, etc, etc. It goes on to say, um, there is ample headroom with either the hood or hard top in position. Another point in favour of this remarkable British motor car. 70s, you know, there were people that still would only buy a British car in Britain, and it's really plain to that, you know, a British motor car keeps reminding us of this. As we turn the page, what do we get next? A nice sort of image of this interior with all this wood, lots of dials on the snag, of course, uh, this manual transmission. We've also got this very strange theme, clearly showing that number plate, unusual for these car brushes to be showing the number plate so much, but you know, obviously they was proud of this model for whatever reason. And um, we also see this sort of jousting, unusual scene of, of two men jousting. Uh, I guess the family's come to have a look at <laughs> this gentleman doing some jousting. Always strange scenes in <laughs> in um, these these 70s brochures and kind of like I do like these very random scenes you do get in 70s brochures. Again, some more text so we'll have a quick look at some of that. Another slanty wording, I'm tipping this around again, is reminding us where the styling's from. Originally styled by Michelotti, the Steiger has been developed as a elegant grand tourer. Matching in looks and performance, many costly specialist cars and import 
or exotic imports. The sleek body lines are complemented by stainless sills and wide aluminium alloy wheels, while four quarter halogen headlamps, side mounted directional indicator repeater lights, tinted glass and laminated windscreen, and a door mounted rear view mirror. Um, it goes on to say how exceptional a motor car this is, and it says, and being a two seater, but with occasional room for two more, the boot is large enough to take ample luggage. It then finally ends up saying, typically Triumph, every detail is treated as an important part of the car. And yeah, it's talking about that boot, which was quite a big boot actually for a sports car. As we turn the page, if I can manage to turn the page, of course, we look at that troublesome V8 engine, but I'm not going to go into too much about that. We don't want to put too much of a downer on this brochure and some more images of this Triumph Stag in traffic. Unusually, on here, we can actually see um, a DAF van, which would have been quite a rare car uh, driving around in the UK, I would imagine. But there we go. Again, we'll have a look at some of this text. So here it's talking about this sports car performance and handling. Going back to tell us about this Synchromesh 4-speed gearbox and the engine. So it's giving us performance figures, but it is using 0-60 to this time. 0-60 in 9, 9 seconds and 60-80 to 80 in 8.5 seconds. It goes on to say, as Malta found out during an extended, extended continental road test, the Stag was proving itself to be quite an outstanding touring car. Just as content to purr along at low speeds with a muted rumble from the V8 ahead, as it has been to cruise at a steady 100 miles per hour the previous day. It'd also be lovely to know, wouldn't it, if this uh, particular red Triumph Stag is, is still in this beautiful condition or if it's like worse for wear or if it's been restored, who knows. And as we turn the page, uh, we see a yellow or a sort of a yellow idea of what a stag would look like in yellow with some dimensions. We're not going to go through all them dimensions, but we'll certainly look at some of this specification. So the all important specifications, uh, this V8 engine, or as it says here, engine number of cylinders eight in a V configuration, capacity 2997cc. And it also gives you the performance through each speeds at different uh, uh, seconds. Unusual to sort of not to 70 miles per hour of 12 seconds. That's quite unusual to see on a 70s car. Maximum speed 120, depending on conditions. What it means by that, I guess it depends if it's got a, a wind behind it, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, get a little bit of a clause there. Well, you can do it in certain conditions. So 120 miles per hour, not 69 seconds. Think sort of like two liter Sierra, I guess that sort of performance. I guess uh, gearbox uh, four forward gears and reverse, of course. I'm not going to read all the specifications, but it's there if you want to pause it and have a look. As is the steering, the brakes, and we've also got some information about general equipment, uh, referring to the interior. I'll just zoom in a bit as it's just struggling to focus on that yellow page. So some of the general equipment, which of course you can certainly um, have a look at, pause the screen if you do want to read the entire text, of course, you're more than welcome to do that. I just don't want to read it all um, because basically the, 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 the video would be far too long, of course. Gives you some information about the lamps. Um, and it's telling us about the optional extra being that automatic transmission. And then finally, when we turn the page, we get our, another picture of our friend there. Some more specifications um, listed on the back as well. And we'll have a quick look at some of this too. On that back page, 
Um, specifications continue, showing some of the weights and capacities. And of course, your typical uh, British Leyland super cover. And at the bottom here, it does continue by showing you the British Leyland plug hole of doom. Gives you a date stamp. And for this brochure, it's March 1976. So, there we go, the Triumph Stag. Um, let me know in the comments of any memories you've had of the Triumph Stag. Whether you had one, your dad had one, your friend down the street had one. Certainly an interesting car. Um, sadly, that I'm not going to say that engine. Let's not mention the engine. Let's not mention the overheating. It was a lovely design, wasn't it? Thank you so much for watching Quartz Light today. Please do like and subscribe. There's going to be many more car brush reviews to come in the near future. But for now, we'll say take care and goodbye.